All right, a couple of reminders before we get started here. We're going to start with an opening statement from head coach Chris Holtman, and then questions can be asked of the student athletes. At the conclusion, the student athletes will be dismissed, and then questions of the head coach can commence. If you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and someone will bring you a microphone. Prior to asking your question, please give your name as well as your affiliation. If you have a follow-up question, please make sure you use the microphone. And one last reminder, no video of any kind is allowed during these press conferences. They'll be available later at the NCAA Digital Media Hub. With that, Coach, opening statement. Yeah, uh, <coughs> credit to our players. They, they were, uh, I thought, uh, locked in on the game plan at a high level. Great respect for this Loyola program, uh, this Loyola team, uh, the job that uh, obviously Porter and now Drew's doing. Uh, terrific players, terrific system. We knew we were in for a rock fight, and that's very much what it was. Uh, so, but our guys deserve great credit. They, they really uh, competed on both ends, and we were able to break away just, just when we needed to. Players win games, and those guys did a great job uh, with that. Questions for the student athletes? We'll start right here. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Kyle, obviously, you know, can you just talk about you know, the struggles to try to get back on the court and get back for this tournament after missing last year's, but then also uh, how many times you ended up on the floor tonight? Um, yeah, you know, I spent this last week, um, you know, just trying to get my conditioning back up a little bit. Um, I haven't, not, you know, been out some of the previous games, which, um, you know, for me in the past. Back on the floor and play with them, but, um, you know, that's part of my game, you know, getting on the floor. So um, if that was going to help me impact the game, you know, I had to do what I had to do tonight. So, yeah. EJ, I know uh, Loyola is probably not happy with the way they played offensively, but your defense deserves a lot of credit. Where did this defensive performance come from? Did you know that this was way, the way you guys could play all season, or, or are you even kind of surprised by how well you guys played on that end? Uh, I'm not surprised. I feel like uh, when we start out the uh, first four minutes, that determines the game. We set the rules. And uh, I feel like we came out here and did a great job on the defense end, great communication. And I feel like uh, we played with an edge tonight. Play like the underdogs. We've got to keep playing like that because uh, people have been counting us out big time. So uh, we're going to have that same mindset come next game. Uh, Kyle, when did uh, Coach refer to uh, last week at the Big Ten tournament, some of the noises and some of those situations that you were back in the locker room watching, when did it become clear to you that you could play or you cleared the protocol? Um, you know, it was a little little bit around that time, maybe a few days after, but um, I made a Columbus Dispatch question for EJ. You talked yesterday about how you're a different team when you're healthy and you thought people were going to see something different today. Uh, how big of an impact is a player like Kyle when it comes to that? And, and what does it feel like to be sitting up there now having played the way you did and saying what you said yesterday? Uh, just having Kyle back is great, uh, as, as well as it. I mean, I felt like everybody who stepped foot on the floor tonight was determined. They was ready. Uh, had a mentality that, like, we can't be beat and we won't be beat. So I feel like uh, if we keep that same mindset, we'll be good to go. Uh, Steve Hellwagon, 24-7 Sports for uh, Malachi. I want to ask you, um, first 10 minutes of this game, they were really bumping you and being very physical with you, and there were a couple turnovers that resulted out of that. But yeah. then you got into a flow and hit a couple shots and in some way kept your team in this game early, hitting a couple shots, 10 points first half. Just what did you have to do after the first three or four minutes of them jostling you yeah. to, to take that contact and, and overcome that? Really just adjusting, um, I'd probably say. Um, just adjusting to the physicality. Um, Coach Holtman and the staff, they was like, they go, they're they a physical team. So, um, you know, they was kind of blitzing the ball screen, so I kind of had to get used to that. Um, but after after I got adjusted, it was, it was cool. Rob Oller, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, coach called it a rock fight. When you go into a game and you know they're going to be physical, and those first five minutes were physical, does that help you play defense, knowing what you're getting into and you just got to bring it? Malachi, you can start with that. You said I can start with that? Yeah, go ahead. Can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you knew going in they were going to be that physical. Does that help you defensively to kind of even going into the game, yeah. ramp it up and match them? Yeah, um, you know, we was already um, like locked in on the defensive end. Um, you know, they was a great team um, shooting the ball, so we just we just um, planned very good and we executed it. Yeah, um, you know, for us, that's our mentality going into every game. We, you know, we try to you know hang our hat on being the more physical team, setting the rules. So, um, you know, when you have a team coming in, you know, that's going to do the same, trying to do the same thing. It's just that much more of a challenge. So, 
um, you know, we love that type of a challenge, and um, we just have to respond. So it's just about who's going to play more physical and, and tougher and win 50-50 balls, things like that. Uh, I just feel like uh, we're a physical team as well. And uh, we came out here. We have some seniors. They have an older group as well. And um, I didn't want our seniors to go home yet. So I did the best I could. Uh, got on the floor a couple times, uh, just giving all extra effort plays to go out there and uh, win the game. So. Uh, Bill Landis from The Athletic. Kyle, did you like take any kind of moment before this game to just appreciate the fact that you were available and able to play after not being available last year? And I guess how did you maybe deal with the, the possibility that you could have missed out on another NCAA tournament with another late season injury? Um, 100%, you know, um, just even putting on my jerseys today, um, just, just taking a moment to reflect on it because um, you know, after the, the last time, you know, when I was out recently, um, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to come back or not. And, um, you know, just being able to put the jersey on again today, you know, meant a lot to me and being able to go to war with these guys. So, um, you know, definitely took a moment to reflect on it and, um, you know, just be very appreciative of, you know, being able to be out there. Hello, this is Okan with Sparkel Media. Looks like your opponent came into the game allowing 61.3 uh, uh, point per game. And you guys did score 54. Do you think the uh, defense is as good as um, it says? And looks like they score usually 73.8 uh, point per game, but you guys were only you guys did manage to give them only 41 today. What was the difference in your uh, playmaking ability? Go ahead, EJ. Uh, yeah, they came. They played really good defense. They're a top 20 uh, defense nationally, and um. Felt like they came out there and competed, and we did as well. So uh, this is a great defense game, not a not a high scoring game, not a big highlight game. But I mean, uh, we just had to make those extra effort plays on the defense, and, and I felt like we did that tonight. So. Last question for the student athletes. Uh, EJ Malakai, um, both of you guys spent portions of the game being guarded by Williamson. He's a guy who's obviously known for his defense. You know, what was it like going up against him? And, you know, just what was working for both of you offensively? Go ahead, EJ. You can start. Uh, first half, he gave me a house. We uh, poked my ball loose a couple times. And, I mean, he was the defense player of the year for a reason. He was a really good defender. He uh, uses his body, body well. And, uh, I mean, that's what they're known for. He leads their defense. He's the older guy of the group. So, uh, as he led their defense, everybody else followed. So, he's a really good defender. Yeah, like he said, um, you know, he's a very – he got active hands. Um, so, you know, when they was kind of blitzing, I was throwing in, and he was like, you know, had his hands on the ball. So um, he's a very good defender. Um, we just had to adjust, and which we did. So, Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. All right, just a reminder, uh, if you have a question, please give your name and affiliation prior to asking your question. Uh, so go ahead. We'll start with for, uh, questions for Coach Holtman. Hey, Chris, uh, Colin Gay Rivals. I'm curious, at what point, or did you see kind of a life defensively because of what Kyle Young was be able, able to provide? It seemed like, whether it was in the backcourt with Jamari, Malachi, it seemed like there was a little bit more life defensively. Yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> we've said it every game he's been out. You know, it's, it's versatility. You know, without Justice in particular, uh, in, in Kyle, we lack versatility. And Gene's done a good job helping with that. But... Uh, he just provides a bunch, it's so much on both ends, and a lot of it's versatility. You know, I mean, I've been saying it, you know, for really two years now. So it's and it's evident in a game like this. Jared Smalley, uh, NBC in Columbus. Chris, about having Zed and Kyle, defensive versatility, very clear. You, clearly, you're a different defensive team with them. Yeah. But more than that, psychologically, emotionally, when you get in the locker room, they're available. Did you notice a change in your team? Did you notice an attitude change, sure. an adjustment? How, how did that factor in? I think it just it, it elevates the confidence of your group when you know you're – we're not at full strength, right, but we're at, at closer to full, full strength. So I think it just elevates the confidence of everybody. And listen, we talked about it. We've, we've been a very good team when we've – you know, we, we haven't had the team we thought we were going to have all year, but when we've had the group – that's helped us win games. We've, we've been a really good team. We've had really good wins. And I'm not putting it all, all of our losses on, on injuries by no stretch. We've played poorly at times at full strength. But, but they make a difference, and I think that elevates the confidence of our guys. Griffin Strom, 11 Warriors. Coach, just given the way that some of your guys' games uh, went down the stretch, and obviously you've uh, critiqued the defense on, on several occasions, what gave you the confidence that you could go into this game with that type of game plan and the confidence to win a rock fight, like you said, 
given the fact that the defense hadn't necessarily played up to the standards leading into this game? Yeah, I mean, I you know, listen, I, I watch every game. I, I But the whole, <clears throat> this whole, you know, I think narratives get played on social media and all that that, that is just not, not really accurate. We, we just focused on winning the next possession. And, um, you know, we felt like our defense really, we could hang our hat on our defense right now. And... Um, and we did that, and we we've not when we when we've struggled closing games, and I, you know I answered that question last week. It's because our defense has not been sound enough for long enough. Spencer Holbrook, Letterman wrote, Chris, you uh you met your guys out at midcourt about 15 minutes ago. Loyal had just called a timeout, and your first message to them was settle settle down. You guys had just taken like a 10 point lead. How important was it to make sure? I asked you about the roller coaster yesterday. How important was it to make sure that? you guys knew not to get too high in that moment. Yeah, I mean, they're a really good team. They're a really good team. You know, they got great spirit to them. Uh, they're, they're a legitimate one of the best teams in the country. There's no question. So um, I think that the focus needed to be on winning this possession out of the timeout, and that's kind of what I said to them. Bill Andis from The Athletic. Chris, uh, I think with about seven minutes left, I, I looked over to your bench. You guys were defending, and everyone on your bench was standing. Coaches and players are just you know, m maybe as into it as I've seen you guys this season as your guys were, were on the floor d defending. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, how how much of a constant conversation has that been with your team all year to get to the point where you defended as consistently as you did today? Yeah, you know, Bill, I think they've, it really comes down to ownership with them. Um, and, uh, and obviously as coaches, we're constantly seeking ways that we can do a better job um, at, uh, at putting our guys in, in position defensively. Um, but I think it ultimately the effort piece comes down to ownership on their part and they were as as bought in and as owned um, as as they've been all year for sure on that end it, it was the best defensive performance uh, we've really had in a couple of years Jerry DePaul of Pittsburgh Tribune Review I a moment ago two of your guys used the same phrase set the rules early in the game is that a mindset that you guys you know want to set the rules early in the game so the team knows what they're up against. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of our core tenets that we talk about. It's it's one of our one of our four things that we talk about. So it's what we try to do every game. We don't always do it as well as we'd like to, but it's what we try to do every game. Last question for Coach, right here. Adam Darty, Columbus Dispatch. Chris, you you just mentioned narratives on social media, and obviously there was pressure coming into this game given how the end of the season had gone, and I know you guys had internal confidence that you'd be healthy and that would make a difference, but what were like maybe the 48 hours leading into this game like for you, and what did it feel like to come out of it with a win? For me personally? Yeah. Um, you know, Adam, you, <coughs> you really have tunnel vision as much as anything during these times. Uh, listen, it's, it's, um, you know, it's not pleasant when things, when people say, negative things about you and uh you know i never got into coaching you know for any type of notoriety positive press or, or negative press so it's it's always an adjustment for you when when you when you have uh, uh the criticism and um but it, it comes with the territory uh and i understand that pressure is a privilege and we certainly as a group felt pressure to perform at a, at a more consistent level we felt confident we could do it at full strength um, you know, I told him, you know, I've been to seven of these things. My first experience was, was here. Um, and we played a good Texas team, beat a good Texas team, and then lost in a really close game to Notre Dame. So um, we've got good, good memories of a place like this. But re it's really tunnel vision right now uh, when it comes to those kind of things. And, you know, now it's moving on to whoever we play next. Thank you, Coach.
friendly reminder, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, someone will come around with a microphone. Uh, please give your name and affiliation. We're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach before we go into questions of the student athletes. Uh, coach Valentine. Yeah, I, um, you know, I don't want this game to define our season. I don't want this game to define a lot of these guys' career um, that have been a part of our program that are now going to be, you know, obviously not playing college basketball anymore um, because where this program has been, where this program has came, and obviously, it, you know, it started with Coach Moser um, and his, you know, coaches, all the former players, um, but but these guys have been the latest addition of the players that, that have helped elevate this program. And so um, I don't want this, um, obviously, it's, it needs to hurt. And it, it, you know, I was at a loss for words after the, after, you know, coming into the locker room because there's so many different emotions, but, um, I think the main thing that I want to focus on is, is um, the program's in a lot better spot than it was, you know, when, when a lot of these guys got here five years ago. So, um, proud of our group. But, you know, obviously today we really struggled offensively, um, you know, making shots, free throws. I thought we had too many turnovers. Um, I thought defensively we were, we were solid at times, but. Um, probably fouled a little too much but um, the main thing that I want to focus on obviously is just uh, I think I think these guys had a great year and I don't want this game to define this team all right questions for student athletes right here Matt Zahn from CBS Chicago Lucas coach touched on it not defining your career can, can you put into words sort of the, the disappointment of the performance today you know against what's obviously been an outstanding career for you yeah I mean I'm disappointed. Um, disappointed in myself. I didn't. Don't feel like I played to to the standard that I put myself at. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Drew said, kind of just at a loss for words. Kind of just stunned right now. Um, yeah. Chris Bowden from WGN TV. Uh, Braden, was this just kind of a day where things seemed to to snowball? It was a case of you know having a bad day at the at the very worst time and and can you tell us also what uh, you kind of had a fight through a fight through there physically in the first half uh yeah i mean you know i think we played pretty pretty well defensively um for the majority of the game i mean they scored 54 points and that was with us fouling and trapping at the end um you know it came down to you know us making and missing shots and you know our offense just wasn't good enough, and uh, I mean, I thought we were in it all the way to the end. Even when you know when they got up 13, 14 points, I felt that we were a couple made shots away from uh, you know getting right back in it. But we never did that. Steve Greenberg from the Chicago Sun Times for Lucas. Um, maybe it's too soon, but have you you know had any chance to sort of think yet about? the decision you made in the first place to go to Loyola about how the last five years has changed your life. Have you, have you begun that at all yet? Um, no, but I can tell you that, you know, coming to Loyola, best decision of my life. Um, the people that I've met here, um, the, the brotherhood that I've, that I've formed with some of these guys, um, it's going to last a lifetime without a doubt. Um, you know, things that I've learned on the court, off the court, in the classroom, off the classroom will last me a lifetime. Um, so I'm just so incredibly blessed that, you know, I was recruited to come to this school. Um, incredibly blessed that we've had, or I've had the career since I've been here. Um, and I'm even more incredibly blessed to be a part of great teams and great people. Mike Berman from NBC Chicago. Lucas, building on that a little bit, you know, freshman year, go to the Final Four, last year's Sweet 16, this year back to the tournament. For you, how do you put into words all that you were a part of and accomplished on the basketball court as a Rambler? Uh, it just goes back to it just being a blessing. I mean, it, when you think about that, like, I never thought that this would be the type of career that I'd had. Like, I would have hoped for it, but, like, you know, it's really hard to get here. It's really hard to... Um, to get and to play in March Madness, especially when you play in a tough conference like the Missouri Valley. Um, so 
yeah, I can't even really put into words other than just being a blessing uh, to, to meet these guys, to be a part of these types of teams. Mark Shanowski, ABC7, uh, question for both players. Braden, maybe we start with you. Coach Holtman was out here a few minutes ago and he called the game kind of a rock fight. The first five minutes were extremely physical, both teams playing incredibly tenacious defense. Did that guy throw you guys off your game a little bit, their physicality? Uh, no, that's what we expected. Uh, we wanted to, we expected <clears throat> them to be super physical and we wanted to, you know, come out and match that and even take it to another level. Um, you know, that's, that's the type of game that we wanted to play. And yeah, we weren't surprised by that at all. Yeah. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Braden, yesterday you talked about the mojo that Sister Jean brings you guys and the emails that she sends after every game. Just wondering, were you guys able to talk with her before this game? And what kind of email do you expect to hit your inbox at some point? Uh, yeah, she's, uh, you know, said her pregame prayer before the game. So we, we spent a couple minutes with her um, prior to the game. And I expect her email to be super positive. You know, she always, you know, thanks us and shows us a lot of gratitude for being who we are and how we play. So last question for the student athletes right here. Good. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you, gentlemen. All right, go ahead and start here, right, right there. Questions for Coach? Um, Matt from CBS Chicago again. Drew, you know, um, when the team's just not making shots like, like your team was today, what can you do as a coach? What do you try to do to get something going offensively? Yeah, I mean, we were trying to run different things, right? Like we were doing ball screens. We were trying to post up some. We were trying to uh, come off staggers. Um, we were trying to, uh, whenever we got to stop, we were trying to push the pace and transition. Um, uh, I was, we were trying a bunch of different things. And um, so you just, uh, we found some success with, you know, our, I can say it now, our Spain ball screen, you know, towards the end, they, they were, you know, were kind of messing that up. So we were just trying a bunch of different things and, and um, it was working. We just uh, missed, missed some open looks and then uh, missed some free throws when we, when we started going to that Spain stuff, so. Nick Lawrence, mid major madness coach. You're the youngest coach in the nation, and you had a stellar season. Just talk about what you can take away from this game today for the future of uh, your coaching career. Yeah, um, it's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I I feel like I just take so much from every game. Um, you know, this one in particular. Um, maybe just trying to find some uh, find. You know something or another way to uh, to come out victorious. Um, you know we tried to change. We're we're not necessarily a. I think one thing I maybe we could have did defensively was trying to try to speed them up or turn them over. But when you look at their assisted turnover, I mean they had six assists and seventeen turnovers. So, but we do a really good job with pressure in the half court. So, um, I don't know. Just maybe just coming up with some some try to find the answer quicker. Mike Perman from NBC Chicago. Um, you know, Lucas has been a pillar of this program, accomplished so much, and you guys came in together. How would you describe what he's accomplished and what he's meant to the program? Yeah. Uh, just everything. Um, it's tough. I feel so bad for him because, you know, like, that to be your last game, like I, that's that should not define Lucas Williamson and who he is as a player, uh, who he is as a person, what he means to this program. Because, like I told him after the game, I'll ride with you to the end, man. I mean, I've seen him go over in games and then boom, make free throws, make a big drive to the basket, make a big defensive play, make a big three at the end of it. I've seen him do that, you know, in his career, and so, um. He deserved to go out better, but um, I'm just proud of where how much he's grown, both like 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 you said, both on and off the court. 
Hi, Lou Calzada from the Loyola Phoenix. I know yesterday I asked you, you know, what have you learned from the head coaches that you've worked under? What have you learned this year from this specific team that you'll take with you? Um, so many things. I mean, what you, I think, you know, what your roster, first of all, what your roster needs to look like for you to have success. For, to play the style of play that I want to play um, and what works here at Loyola. Um, communication. Continuing to find ways to effectively communicate to put your team in a position to have success. Preparation. How much is too much? How much is too little? What I'm comfortable with as a coach so that I'm not on edge, so that it doesn't transfer over to the players. Um, So many different things. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but um, I mean, it's it's one of the biggest things, I guess, would be like when you enjoy the kids that you coach, student athletes, sorry, young men. I don't want to say kids, but like when you enjoy the young men that you coach, it just makes it a better, it just makes it so much better. That's probably the number one thing. Obviously, I knew that as an assistant coach, but in my position, um, when you thoroughly enjoy those young men and you have great relationships with them, it just it, it makes it a great vibe for you every day. And I think that creates an atmosphere where everybody wants to have success and everybody wants to be in. Ed Major, A-10 Talk. Did you expect this game to be such a defensive struggle? And do, do you feel like you can use your defensive skills going forward as you enter into the Atlantic 10 next season? Um, I sure hope we can play defense still next year in the Atlantic 10. Um, you know, uh, one thing that I started talking about with this team um, late in the season was that if we brought our the, the right edge, the right approach to the, and I talked about it a little bit yesterday, when we bring the right, right approach, people struggle to score 50 points on us per game. Um, you know, that was kind of our, our, that ended up being our goal was to not let teams get to 50. And I think in the first half today, I think when they saw, you know, wow, they only had 23 points. I, I think our guys were like, you know, regardless of who you're playing, coach, you might be right. And so um, it was just things like that, that, uh, you know, really that, that mental approach helped us all year. Um, but as far as what we can, you know, take from our defense, it, a lot of it, you know, it started with, with, with the guys that we had. And obviously, you know, there's going to be different people in those positions next year. And so, uh, you know, everybody talks about defense wins championships, and that's been what has made us so special here at Loyola is those defensive numbers. So um, we're definitely looking and going to continue to add, you know, two-way wings um, to help replace Tate Lucas in here. Last question for Coach right here. Mark Shanowski, ABC7. Coach, uh, you've been here seeing the program rise, going to the Final Four, going to the uh, Sweet 16, and now back becoming really an NCAA tournament fixture. You're losing some great veteran leaders off this team. What's going to be the challenge for you trying to keep this program at that level where making the NCAA tournament is no longer a surprise for Loyola? Yeah, I think the first thing we got, we got to do, me and my staff got to do a great job, obviously, in the transfer portal this spring. Um, I mean, you can see Twitter. I mean, we're, we're involved, we're, we call, you know, we're, we're, we're working it. We, we're high motor with it. Um, so we got to crush that. We got to get guys that are um, great fits for our program. Um, you, you see the success that we've had, you know, six straight years and all league transfer, really hard to do. Um, Missouri Valley Conference, there's 15 guys make the all league team. Six straight years, there's been a transfer from Loyola Chicago on Missouri Valley Conference team. So that's that's pretty hard to do. We got some some good stuff to sell. So we got to crush that. And then we got to continue to to get better. Like the guys that have been here have gotten better. So like, um, you know, like a Braden, he's I, I think he's way better this year than he was last year. Lucas obviously made a huge jump offensively. Here got better. Tate got better. Um, you know, Ryan Schwieger got better. I mean, the, the guys that have been within our program have gotten better. So we got to have a great, we got to get the right guys. We have to, you know, obviously continue with the culture piece off the court, on the court, um, the vibe. And then we got to continue to get our guys better. Um, I think we've got some guys. You know, Ben Schweiger's been a guy that we've gotten way better this year, and I'm really excited for his future. So, thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you. Appreciate y'all all year. Thank you.